I've known a few people who've had something called deep brain stimulation. Can you explain what deep brain stimulation is and when, when you might need it? So deep brain stimulation has been around for decades. You know, it was shown to be helpful in Parkinson's disease in the, in the early 90s in, in Grenoble in France. In the UK, it's, it's now um, widely available. There are about 15 centres in the UK that do deep brain stimulation operations for patients with Parkinson's. So it involves a, a, a surgical procedure to precisely place fine wires, one on each side of the brain, to um, various targets. The most common target in the brain is a, a brain region called the subthalamic nucleus. And then those wires are tunneled under the skin, behind the ear, and connected up to a pacemaker. So everything is under the skin. It can't be seen outside. Levodopa will often only work for two or three hours and then wears off. And this is what causes the motor fluctuations, the ups and downs throughout the day. And you can mimic the, the benefits of levodopa instead of dopaminergic stimulation by electrical stimulation through these wires delivered by the pacemaker. And the advantage is that this electrical stimulation can provide the same benefit as, as levodopa, but in a more consistent way. So rather than having the ups and downs every few hours with the tablets, it can keep things smooth daytime and nighttime and, and lead to um, better symptom control. Usually we use the, the DBS in combination with um, dopaminergic tablets, but it changes the big ups and downs into smaller ripples. So when the, the pills wear off, people don't sink, sink so far in terms of the, the slowness, sickness and tremor of Parkinson's. And obviously the, the idea of brain surgery sounds quite scary to many people, but I think certainly my experience as people I've known who've had DBS, you know, think it's remarkable the, the effect it makes, the difference it makes to their lives. It, it's all about the selection process. So if, if an experienced team recognises which patients are, are going to do well, we do a, a leave it open challenge and we see how bad someone's Parkinson's is without the pills and how reversible their symptoms are when the pills are working. We also do an MRI scan and we look to see how um, intact the brain is. If the, the brain is you know, a young looking healthy brain, then it's likely to withstand the surgery in, in a much better way. And we do detailed memory tests to look to see how the whole brain is working, not just the movement parts of it. And that's testing someone's memory, attention, language, executive function, all of these things. So we, we, we can anticipate that someone can withstand um, a brain operation. We have to discuss what, what the risks that are, that are involved are, but it means that at the end of the procedure, someone can appreciate the benefits of the surgery and their expectations of, of what they'll experience after the surgery align with, with what they actually perceived. If you're interested in finding out more about Parkinson's, subscribe for a new video every Thursday.